This bed I'm holding in my hand right here is called the Emo Kamushi. It is made by G-Crack, and while it looks wild, it's one of the most unique presentations to trigger strikes on tough days. Uh, to understand this bait, you gotta know a little bit about the, like the history of it. So this is the Emo Kamushi. Um, its predecessor is the Emo Ripper, which is essentially just the plastic bait minus the skirt material you see right here that I just pulled out of this bait. The Emo Ripper is actually the first of its kind in that like high gravity type bait. It's got a lot of, lot of salt in this. It is a heavy bait. You throw it weightless. A lot of people know like the cover scat for that category. The Emo Ripper was actually the first of its kind to hit the market in Japan uh, and begin dominating, dominating tournaments on Lake Biwa. Then, you know, we've got all kinds of different turd style lures that have come um, after it, but this this bait right here, there's several different ways I like to fish it, several different ways I like to rig it, depending on the types of cover that I'm throwing it around. The most common way, because you're fishing this bait deeper, it's not a shallow bait, um, you need little to no wind. Because you're throwing it weightless, you throw it on a fluorocarbon line that's gonna sink with the bait, um, and you simply throw it on like a five or a six aught EWG, and that's for throwing it around heavy cover, brush piles, stumps, um, fishing it in a weedless sense. Uh, they do fish around deep grass lines, uh, but my favorite way to fish it, if you're not fishing it around heavy cover or you're fishing it around deep like short grass or rock, is I actually fish it uh, threaded on a straight shank flipping hook, which I've, I've done both ways. The problem is with a EWG, your hookup ratio can be difficult. You're fishing a weightless style bait, deep water, line that's sinking, and so picking up enough slack and being able to penetrate that hook can be a trick. So you have to be incredibly intentional about that. And what's so unique about this bait too is that as it falls totally horizontal, when and I'm learning to fish it myself too, I've been taught by Japanese anglers uh, that have been doing it much longer than I have, they actually they let it sink to the bottom and they twitch it, almost like you would twitch a weightless fluke or a jerk bait. Twitch, twitch, twitch. And this bait is simply going to walk the dog under the water and sink right back down, uh, completely horizontal. And you know, when you look at this bait, I can stretch and be like, oh, you know, they think it's a crawfish or it's bulky, you know, they, you know, like a jig, you think it's a bluegill. Um, but I'm kind of a believer as a bass is an opportunistic feeder, right? If they can fit their mouth around it and it looks like something wounded in an easy meal, they're, you know, a lot of times they're going to try it out. You know, you, you look at baits like a whopper plopper. They've never heard a shad sound like that. Um, you look at baits like a chatterbait. I mean, like there, there are ways you can stretch and be like, oh, it's a bait fish, a bluegill or whatever. But a lot of times a bass is simply looking for an easy, high protein meal. And uh, in, in a world where they see tons of drop shot worms and football jigs and Carolina rigs, um, having something different and I've said it in many of my other videos, is what's gonna generate bites, right? Um, it's not necessarily about matching the hatch. And this bait, while you would think it's nothing like this bait, um, glide baits have what we call draw power. Um, even fish that are not interested in biting it will follow it, it'll show you fish. You know, um, a brush pile that you might throw a football jig through and think there's no bass in, you throw a glide bait over the top of it, it draws them out. A lot of times this bait tends to have that same pull power just because it's so unique and it's so unlike anything the bass have ever seen, like look wise and presentation presentation wise. They come in several different sizes. Um, they've got some that are made out of elastomere and uh, the one thing about that is they float great on a drop shot, um, Carolina rig, things like that. But the typical way to fish it um, is I'm fishing the bigger one. I'm throwing it on heavy line, I'm throwing it a long ways and it is not a bait to find fish with. It is a bait to catch fish with. Typically I'm going to try to locate these fish with some type of moving bait um, or just something that I can cover water with because your casts are painfully long. I mean when you fish this in 20 feet of water, weightless, while it does sink faster than any other plastic you've probably ever thrown before, it takes a long time to get to the bottom. You're looking at one to two feet a second um, and you fish it slow. I mean I'm, I'm, when I fish it on an offshore ledge you're three, four, five minutes per cast. So it's a, it's a bait that takes a lot of patience. It is not a search bait, it is a catch bait. It is something that on tough bodies of water, everybody should have in their boat or in their tackle box because it's gonna generate bites 
with fish that have seen every other trick in the book. If you guys want to pick up some emo kamushis for yourself or emo rippers, they're going to be linked below. So make sure you check them out on tacklewarehouse.com. And I want you guys to tell me, you know, I'm a little bit plugged into the Japanese market with G Crack. So if there's any other tr techniques or trends you guys want to learn about or hear about, whether it's mid strolling, hover strolling, uh, let us know in the comments below and we'll drop a video on it.